from Chicago and the Philippines. A comprehensive review of the week's special community events, featuring many exciting personalities, handled by the most professional Chicago Philippine Reports TV staff. Good afternoon and welcome to the Chicago Philippine Reports TV, still the number one Filipino show in the Midwest. I'm Gurley Pascual. Welcome to our show. Today we have all the top stories from the Philippines. We also have what's happening in our own Filipino-American community of Chicago. We have interesting interviews led by our very own executive producer, Miss Veronica Layton. We have Bridget Cotero Carino. All these are coming up and more afterward from our sponsors. Please stay with us. Philippine shares were among the worst performers in Asia on Tuesday. The main index now back below the 6,700 level after shedding nearly 1% or some 62 points. Value turnover was at some 6 billion pesos. Regina Capital says Philippine shares settled in the red amid mounting concerns over rising rates and tighter monetary policy in the United States. Meanwhile, Erwin Fuentes of RCBC Securities believes some stocks have already reached oversold levels. As a rule of thumb, no, uh, again, uh, oversold for RSI levels would be at around uh, 30. So among our covered companies at the moment, ASEN and Converge are at 33.7 and 33.4 respectively. So they're slowly moving toward oversold levels. In corporate news, Globe says it has started reaping gains from its strategic shift beyond telco. It reveals its non-telco revenues are up 118% year on year as of June. Meanwhile, Ayala Group's energy arm ASEN says its 72-megawatt solar farm joint venture with Citicor Renewable Energy Corp. is now fully operational. The nearly 3 billion peso solar farm is generating 105 gigawatt hours of renewable energy, equivalent to supplying power to approximately 45,000 homes. Via Times, vital news, vibrant views for the Filipino-Asian communities in Chicago. Via Times, for your most interesting and exciting reading and your party coverages. Via Times has very interesting columnists. You name it, Via Times has it. Law, Filipino news, dentistry, immigration, humor, serious opinions, health, beauty, mysticism, bata corner, showbiz, and intelligent written editorials. Call Via Times at 773-866-0811. Magandang hapon po sa inyo lahat and welcome to Veronica's segment of the show. Today, I have a, a lady who is, is a very familiar face, um, not only here in our show, but also in Milwaukee where she lives. Uh, let us welcome Miss Janet, Janet Jordy. Thank Did you very much. Yeah. Uh, your name right? Okay. Yes. Thank Can you it? very much, Tita Vera, for the quite introduction. Okay, Janet. Uh, Janet is uh, a very active uh, leader in the uh, in Milwaukee, right? No, no. in Wanake, Wanake, Madison. Of Madison, Miss Wisconsin, and um, and uh, let us hear from her what uh, what she does. Uh, first thing, Janet. Uh, please um, tell us briefly about yourself. I am Jeanette Jordy, and I have been in the United States of America for 21 years. Since I moved to America, it's, it's a dream of mine to have a foundation. So I have been a member of a lot of nonprofit or NGOs and other clubs to do volunteering and to hone my leadership skills. But it is pride and honor to serve the Filipino community. And I have been the president of PAMANA, or the Philippine American Association of Madison and Neighboring Areas, for years. And currently, I am the founder and the president, besides my daytime job, of a nonprofit organization called Global Inspiration. And Global Inspiration is spelled not in I, 
but one. But it is read as global inspiration. Great, terrific. Okay, what is, let's talk about this, be, uh, being a founder and president of Global Inspiration, uh, uh, what is this all about? So we, there are four women, women of color gathered, four of us, and one from Waukesha, one from Wanaki, one was Wawatosa, and one from Madison. We gathered together and founded this, this nonprofit organizations because we know we can do more than volunteering. We can do more than donating. And this is, and this is to educate, mentor, um, and advocate regarding human trafficking, domestic abuse, and incestuous relationship, and talk to women to give them empowerment. So I know that the four of us are doing a great job. It's overwhelming. The response of the community is very overwhelming. And in fact, we have two scholarships that we just released last week. And, you know, and we are also donating to the physically incapacitated committee. These are all from the Philippines, but the scholarship is in the United States of America. About these uh, other women who are with you in this organization, uh, how were you able to choose them? Because I know they are smart and they are humble. They are authors, they are active in social, they are social events, and I know they have the heart and they are so humble. I want to, to the women to be involved, to talk about who are we serving, not I, me, and myself. And these are the perfect women that I chose. And they agree, oh, yes, sure, Jeanette, we can help you out, we can help you out. And I, I totally agree with what is the mission of this global inspiration. Yeah, what is the, really the mission of global inspiration? So global inspiration, so I would say that we are here, we are created, to help the less privileged people that in Philippines, in the United States, and in West Africa. And we are doing advocacy, we are doing mentorship, and we are also donating money to our partners in the Philippines. So it is more on the underprivileged and the human trafficking, the domestic abuse. So we have that mission. Our charitable purpose is for the Philippines, United States, and West Africa. How old is the organization? Believe it or not, it's only six months. It's only six months. It's, it has been approved as a 501c3 last February. We applied last November in 2021, but we were not, uh, we were approved as a nonprofit organization, but we want it to, to be a 501c3. And we applied, and you have to wait for 90 days since November. And in February, we received the approval from the IRS. So it's only six months to the euro. So far, um, tell us about um, any uh, current projects that you've had. Yeah, it, it, it's, as I mentioned before, it's the, the response of the community is very overwhelming. There are Wanaki High School students that are coming to my house this coming Saturday to pack Balik Bayan boxes to be sent to the Philippines to send to the survivors of human trafficking, domestic abuse. And there are like maybe five students are coming in. And then we have, we also sponsor a whole, uh, there's a golf event that will be in September 24th. And we will have a racing event. It is a Chipotle fundraising event that will be on October 22nd. And the social services committee is planning to work with the homeless, the tiny homes. And we are planning to have a gala in Milwaukee next year. So far, that is all I can remember for now. Janet, uh, sending uh, Balik Bayan boxes in, in the Philippines seems to me to be kind of tedious. That is a tedious work. Do you do you get some help in doing that? Yes, yes. So when I posted on Facebook, we have a group here in Wanaki. So just to correct you, I am from Wanaki, Wisconsin, not from Milwaukee. So when I posted on Facebook, I need help 
to in my Facebook and also in Wanaki, it's a very overwhelming um, response. I could not even walk through our living room because we have a lot of donation from them. We have shoes, we have clothes uh, from kids to adults. We have books, we have, we, have, we have everything. It is very tedious. If you will think it in a negative way, it's very tedious. It, it takes a lot of work, but I am not that kind of person. I am so negative. We're helping a lot of people and we are blessed to be here in America. So, and there are a lot of people helping me this out. I really admire your tenacity and hard work, uh, Janet. Doing that, really, I, I know how hard it is. I understand. And uh, congratulations. Uh, uh, so how do you see uh, the uh, organization Global Inspiration in uh, five years from now? For now, we are only six months old, and I can feel that the overwhelming support of the community, how much more five years from now? So I would say that five years from now, I would see global inspiration to be better, stronger, and I want not just the adults or the teens to be talking regarding global inspiration, including the kids. In fact, I have kids volunteering for the packing of the donation boxes this coming Saturday. So it will be the kids, the teens, and the adults that will be talking about global inspiration. And then we will have more partners in the Philippines. For now, we have five partners in the Philippines, but I hope in five years, it will grow more. And that, that's how I can see five years from today, Mr. Vero. Five years from today. Yes. Wow. I believe you. I I really admire you. And uh, before we sign off, uh, one last word for, for our viewing audience for, um, for what would you what you do about global inspiration? Inspiration. Yes, global inspiration is spelled as I instead of I for inspiration. It will be one. Because I want you to know that we are all one, regardless of our religion, regardless of our race, regardless of our age, sexual preferences, and physical capacity, we are all one. And Global Inspiration has this code, we need to be seen, we need to be heard, and be an inspiration of the world. Whether you are a single mom, you are homeless, we are all one. And I want people to know, be kind. Be kind to survivors of human trafficking, be kind to survivors of domestic abuse and suicide relationship, uh, rape of victims, and we are be kind to them. Your five dollars, your ten dollars counts a lot to family who needs financial support. Is there any plan in uh, increasing the increasing the membership and how? There is no there is no membership. We only have the war the board executive board and we have the directors we have director of fundraising director of social services director of marketing and director of education it is easy to manage i think rather than being a, being controlled by the membership so it's open to everybody open open to everybody you can volunteer you can donate whatever <laughs> all right all right janet it is really young a pleasure yeah. Yeah. interviewing yeah. you today. I really admire you and I salute you for what you're doing. By the way, Janet is the recipient of our Chicago Filipino Asian American Hall of Fame. Yes, and I have interviewed also one Gina, uh, one of the recipients of the Hall of Fame. And it is good. I also have a global inspiration podcast which prodded me to create the global inspiration uh, non-profit at ONC3. Maybe you can uh, nominate for our upcoming projects uh, some of those women helping you in, uh, for the Hall of Fame. Yes. Okay. yes. I will get in touch with you and I really congratulate you for what you're doing and keep us updated 
keep us updated. So we really don't care how many times we have interviewed you. We we would love to have you in our show. Yeah. Thank you for the privilege to be interviewed by your show, Tito Vera. Thank you so much. Uh, maraming maraming salamat po sa inyong pananood at iyan po si Miss Janet Jordi. I hope you you've uh, really recognized her and also learned something about the global inspiration today, Janet. Oh, you're not. You're really going global. I salute you. Hopefully, hopefully. <laughs> okay. Bye now. Bye. Bye, Tita Vera. Oh, that's on. Yan, dito na. Perfect. Magandang hapong po sa inyo lahat and welcome to Veronica's segment of the show. Today, I have a very good friend, a military man, a businessman, and a community uh, leader, actually. Uh, and uh, I think he has, really, he has appeared in our show before. And um, his face and name is familiar. His name is Dale Tipet. And Dale is going to be talking about the veterans' uh, causes that he has been handling in our community. And um, let me ask Dale first. Uh, can you please tell, tell us, uh, Dale, about your military experience, your title, and uh, are you, uh, what is your military uh, title, corporal or something? Uh, well, I, I was in the United States Navy in the mid 1970s. I was a uh, part of um, uh, uh, the very tail end, literally, of the Vietnam War. And I served aboard an amphibious assault cargo ship. And um, I was a petty officer, second class. So I was an enlisted guy for four years and I served. And, uh, and then I came home to Chicago and, and, and just worked. But I got involved with the veterans community probably about 15 years later after I got out of the active duty, after I uh, left the, the Navy. Okay, so... Uh... I really appreciate and congratulate you for your involvement with the uh, veterans community. So what are some of the top concerns of our U.S. Uh, veterans so far that you can mention? Well, you, sure, sure. Uh, as, 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 um, as, as we speak, uh, there's, there's a group of veterans that are, are growing in numbers, fortunately, and are coming together and are really, it's very much of a grassroots movement. Um, as I mentioned, it was about 15 years after I left active duty that I got involved with the veterans community. That's been 30 years ago. So I've been involved with the American Legion and um, the Veterans of Foreign Wars, VFW, et cetera, and some other organizations for, for a long time. Uh, but as most members of these organizations, you join and because you're raising a family, you're working, you're doing things, your time to really participate on a, uh, on a real activist level is pretty generally limited. But uh, a, a, a number of years ago, I got involved with the um, volunteering uh, through the American Legion at the Jesse Brown VA, which is here in Chicago on the South side, Jesse Brown VA uh, uh, Hospital. Uh, and through that, met all kinds of veterans. I mean, all kinds of veterans from World War II, Korea, Vietnam, et cetera, the Gulf Wars, <laughs> Afghanistan. And there has been different issues that have been rolling for years. Of course, with Vietnam era veterans, it was a real intense issue for the um, Agent Orange 
problem that we've had. And then there's been other issues as far as most recently, what they call burn pits and these toxins that these more, the younger veterans have experienced. And we've got some good news on that front. Uh, the overwhelming number one priority right now, though, that is just heartbreaking is the uh, suicides that are, are so prevalent, 20, 22 a day. And it's, and it's really tough. So to answer your question, there's a group that I, I, I've recently been meeting with in Niles and um, they have a, a good group of, of veterans that show up there weekly. I'm talking 50 to, all, 50 to 100 that come by every week. And uh, I, I put the question out to them. You know, I had mentioned that I would be seeing you and that if there was anything that I wanted to mention. And it was actually... One thing that came up was uh, uh, that the concern was that vet they feel as though veterans are being forgotten. Uh, that's a concern. Now, how I know we have a, we're in a time period right now where there is a lot of patriotism and support in the media, et cetera, for veterans. But how much of that actually rings sincere and true? I don't know uh, because some of the some of the issues that when it's dealing with communities and what are they really willing to do for the veterans, that that's that's not always the case. Sometimes, if, and I'll get to that in a moment. But veterans being forgotten is an issue. And the thing is, is that always uh, the, the, there's been this feeling from a lot of in the veterans community that they feel as though without the veterans, the, we would have no republic. Without, the, without those who have served, we wouldn't have what we have today. So, but it, it really is very layered and it, and, it, and it fans out, it branches out into a lot of areas of concern because these veterans are just regular Americans from all different walks of life. So there's different points of concern uh, uh, from, from different perspectives, of course. So they don't want to be forgotten. Number one. Okay. I, that's kind of sad to hear. And, um, and also I know some concerns, not only, um, suicide is really a terrifying aspect. And uh, that's also what you call PTSD. And, the fear, just just like what you said, the feeling of homeless. I mean, uh, of uh, being um, being forgotten as a goal. What do you mean, being forgotten? Well, you know, there's a difference. Not all veterans are the are 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 have have experienced like trauma. So uh, just to enlist and go and serve your country, uh, so many people who are veterans, they're very, very humble and they take on the, they take the oath and they go where they're sent and so forth. But, and a lot of folks have a wonderful experience, learn a trade, you go to school, you receive a lot of benefits and recognition that stays with you for your whole life. But there are some who get caught up in, um, what we would say all of the other right. veterans are supporting, who are your actual, you know, your combat veterans, those who are put in just, you know, such challenging situations and, um, and, and sometimes repeatedly. And so I'm no doctor, but I've worked with these people a, a lot of, you know, a, a long time, some from World War I. I've known veterans from World War I, World War II, Korea, I mean, the whole spectrum. But um, today we've had a tragedy uh, in our sphere over the last year of uh, several who young veterans in their 30s with families that had experienced issues from overseas and they go into this depression and uh, they feel isolated as much as we love them and we want to support them. And I mean, they got kids, they got families. They're, I mean, 
but uh, there's there's just an issue. So there, fortunately, in fact, just a, as recently as yesterday on Moody Radio, uh, Janet Parshall's program, she had um, a um, a veteran who had just published a book and uh, on on his dealing. He was he was had multiple tours in Afghanistan. I think he went there three times. He was in a lot of combat. And when he came home, he just, no matter what anybody said to him about how welcome he was, he couldn't get over his experiences. And he was uh, actually trying to take his life. And um, he has quite a compelling testimony how that was, uh, uh, you know, uh, avoided. And so he's, he's been on, on the road of recovery and he's, he's, you know, written a book and so forth. So it's a very complex, uh, complex situation that uh, we're all struggling with. We just know that it's a crisis. Uh, we do have a crisis hotline, and I can give you that phone number right now. And it's for anyone. It doesn't have to be a veteran. It's anyone who feels that they're ready to harm themselves. They could call this crisis hotline. And someone will pick up and talk with them, and 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 I can I can share that with you if you if you want it. What is, what is the crisis uh, hotline? The, the the crisis hotline number is 800-273-8255. 800-273-8255. And what we're asking is is for everyone to put that in their phone because you never know when you run into a situation and you all of us we don't we freeze we we don't know what to do if you have it in your phone you can call right away and hopefully uh help somebody well I hope thank that you. answers that thank you, sure. but, uh, my other question is uh, are there other service organizations helping the veterans Yes, yes, there are. Uh, the old, well, there's the largest is the American Legion, which was founded uh, at, at the end of World War I. Uh, there was a situation to where soldiers went to fight, they came back home, and they were just basically released back home. Uh, they had the um, uniform on their back, they were given about $68 and a bus ticket to the uh, location closest to the place where they enlisted. And that was it. There was no, it, it didn't matter what kind of issues they may have had. Well, there was a flood of these veterans that had come home. And so they found one another. They organized and the American Legion was founded. Eventually out of that, the VA hospitals did come out and the benefits that go along with that. <clears throat> so the, the Veterans uh, uh, Administration and, and their re rehabilitation, uh, what they call Veterans Affairs and Rehabilitation, um, it came out of that. Uh, also, national security issues, the, that group, since they fought in the war, they knew how devastating it is. And in order to avoid future conflicts, we need to have strong national security so people will think twice before dragging us into a conflict. And then also they felt very strongly about educating our children and youth about patriotism and the seriousness of our history. Uh, because God forbid, if we are drawn into a conflict, we need to mobilize everyone. It's a whole national effort. So that way we protect our, our, our home, uh, just to be aware of, of what, what goes on. That's why our, 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 um, you know, our uh, ROTC programs and the high schools and all that's so very important. You know, 95% of those kids that go through uh, ROTC, they don't go in the service. It's not, it's not a recruiting mechanism at all. What it is, it's, it's really what they learn over the three, four years that they take junior ROTC in high school, they learn the basics that we would learn who just join and go to boot camp or basic training. They learn the ranks, they learn the basic protocols, they learn some discipline, but the majority of those kids do not go to, into the military but at least they got that training. And then of course, what we call Americanism, uh, that comes out of uh, you know, the American Legion, uh, 
that's a that's one of their pillars, a, a major thing that they do. And that's all the patriotic uh, symbolism that we do and the education, the history, the the memorials, all of that. And we all need that to keep us focused on where we came from and being united, particularly under the, you know, uh, uh, the, our flag, the United States flag. Um, but there, there's also the, the VFW, which we've heard of, you know, Veterans of Foreign Wars. That's actually an older organization that's been around since like 1899. That came out of the Spanish-American War, you know, through some things. Uh, so in Illinois, if you look at Illinois, VFW has got 40,000 members. Um, American Legion has got 64,000 members here right in Illinois. But I'm told there's like 700,000 veterans in Illinois. I got that from a year, that statistic uh, about six months ago from the commander of the American Legion. Uh, so, um, but the point is, is um, having that voice Right now, as we speak, the American Legion is just wrapping up their their annual convention in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and the American Legion has um, uh, th their punch list of what is their legislative agenda that goes to Congress, the Congress of the United States, saying these issues are important to us. And uh, the commander, the national commander of the American Legion, who represents like 1.6 million members, he goes and has an audience with the uh, with Congress, the United States. So we get the word out there, uh, and and um, those are voices. Another one, briefly, is uh, of course you've got AMVETS, uh, and then you've got um, some others. But one in particular that I'm very close with is Vietnam Veterans of America. And there, they they were formed uh, because of um, their welcome home was not uh, like we see today, nor of like our World War II veterans uh, had received. They were different. They were much more of an outcast group, and whatever they complained about, they weren't were not listened to for a long time. And that's why they were much more activist oriented. They started the welcome home. Back in the 80s, they had the welcome home parade here in Chicago because our Vietnam veterans never got a welcome home parade. That's why when you see a Vietnam veteran, you're greeting to him as you say, welcome home, brother. Welcome home, brother. That's the best greeting you can give to a Vietnam veteran. But they're the ones who fought um, to get Agent Orange recognized as a real detriment to their health, to them and their families. That poison gets in your system. It doesn't come out. It goes on for generations. It's a big problem. So yes, American Legion, VFW, Vietnam Veterans of America, AMVETS, and then there's others. Uh, the Elks, there's there's others that are, that are patriotic and a lot that are very small that are called NGO, non-governmental organizations that are people that have a particular issue they're really concerned with, and they'll just focus on that little bitty niche. And we all see each other. We all run, we have each other come out and speak at the meetings and support as best we can. Okay, one last question. What do you think can be done to recruit and revive um, the excitement to enter um, the military world for our young people? Well, in well, I say I say it's it, it's paying attention and respecting the United States flag and all that it represents. We're unique. Um, you know, it's said for hundreds of years that we were exceptional as Americans because we form we were formed to serve God and country. And that has many different ways of doing that, but it's symbolized by our flag, God and country. So in order to go ahead and get people uh, enthused about getting involved in the military, uh, we have to show unity. All of this nonsense about being all these ethnic groups having to have their own thing going on. Hey, we're from Chicago. If you want the best food in the world, you come to Chicago because we got all the people from all the various countries who are the cooks. I mean, we got the greatest Italian, the greatest Filipino. We got the greatest Vietnamese. It just goes on and on and on. 
but we're all Americans. We're all Americans. That flag belongs to all of us. And once we can get that through some people's thick heads, we're gonna be good, but it's not politically expedient because they want, they, and there's an evil force out there, I'll say it, that wants to divide us. We don't need that anymore. And we've never needed it. We've been through this, we've been down this road before and there's a lot of bad road back there. We have to respect our flag. In fact, one of the um, service organizations, the American Legion has a flag amendment out there for, uh, they wanna amend the constitution. So as make it illegal, not uh, that you may not like burn the flag, desecrate the flag. That's our symbol. That's what, and we have to get back to that. So civics in school, we have to respect the flag and study civics and not revisionist nonsense. What is the truth? What happened? How to participate? And how can we work together as Americans, not political parties to the left, to the right, to the upside down, whatever? Uh, so, but that's that's what's key. When you, you get around a lot, and I'm out a lot, I'm like out all the time. Um, on As we get together as individuals, we love on one another. We have a good time. We did we, all these things are, are you say, well, where's the problem? There is no problem. The problem is some talking heads that, that they want to divide us and we must not be divided. We're Americans. We have many different various cultures and traditions. And we as Americans, we celebrate that. That's what makes us exceptional. That's what makes us Americans. That is so very interesting, Dave. We need people like you to be talking to, <clears throat> to our young people, even older people out there uh, in respecting the flag, respecting and loving our country. And I love that. And um, well, uh, thank you for the very informative and educational, um, I mean, words about our military. And um, we hope to, we, um, we would like to invite you once again to be, because the topic, this topic is the really- I look forward to it. Something that uh, we need to hear and give us uh, some kind of peps to really work out Thank there. You. If I'm- Really, uh, respect our military men and be conscious of uh, and aware of, of their uh, problems that are affecting them right now, uh, the veterans and uh, the number of suicides is just hor really horrible. Suicide. Yes. PTSD, I don't know why they, they will resort to taking taking their lives and uh, which is really very sad. I would be remiss if I didn't mention that uh, September, we've got a number of events going on just to keep, they're on the calendar just to be yeah. mindful of them is that, uh, you know, tomorrow, September 2nd is the anniversary of the signing of the surrender of Japan during World War II aboard the USS Missouri. That's tomorrow. It's uh, September 2nd, 1945. It was a very important date. But then we've got 9-11 coming up. There's going to be various ceremonies going on. Uh, also, September 16th is POW MIA Day. We still are missing 83,000 who went off to service and they never came home. And what we end up doing is there's remembrance ceremonies here and there, but we're asking for closure for the families and those, those from down the line, because a lot of the families have passed away. We're looking for closures uh, for what happened 
to these men who fought in the wars and women uh, and to get their remains returned to us. We have an idea of where a lot of them are, but we haven't been able to get to them. That's that's a real issue. 83,000 are still missing in POW, missing in action. And then on September the 17th, we have to remember it's the most it's so very important, and unfortunately, it's, it's not lifted up as it should be, but it's Constitution Day. Everything that we do in our nation is driven by that document, the Constitution of the United States. Well, September 17th, we, we need to be mindful. All the schools are supposed to be giving lessons on, on the Constitution on that day. It's a Saturday this year, but... Uh, uh, I just plead to our edu educators in the community to uh, let's go ahead and tell the story of the Constitution and uh, all the good, the bad, the ugly, all of it, whatever it is, but tell the truth and uh, let's keep it transparent and let's work on this together. But thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you, Dale. Thank you for the information and the updates. Just um, uh, let us know in by times. And um, I really appreciate your appearance on our show today. And I hope you have a good day. You're very welcome. So, maraming maraming salamat sa iyo. At, um, okay, enjoy. You know, Mr. Del Tipez is a very active, uh, um, I mean, person in our community. And uh, we appreciate that. Uh, he really tries to lend his hand in some organizations out there. Thank you, Dale. Thank You're you welcome. so much. We would like to welcome all of you to Baladna Jewelry. We have a very big selection of 21 karat gold jewelry imported from the Middle East, from Dubai, Saudi, and Bahrain. And we have a very big selection of diamond. We offer free financing for six months and uh, we have a layaway system which you can leave your stuff for three months. We repair gold and we buy old gold. Welcome to Baladna Jewelry. Salamat Bo! show in the Midwest. I'm Brady Pasquale. Today we are excited to have with us the very, very famous, beautiful, multi-talented singer, actress, producer, songwriter, lahat na yata. And she's back in Chicago after a long hiatus, Miss Vina Morales! Hi everybody! Um, I'm so happy to be here. Um, after so many years, and of course after the pandemic, but it's still pandemic. Yes. And yes. I am here, and I am excited to perform for everyone tonight here in Chicago. Well, I must say, Vina, the last time I saw you was like probably about 15 years ago, oh your last God. Chicago concert. Vina uh, Yes, in a while. It was in fact produced by. Uh, Dr. Sulit. Well, he was one yes. of the producers. This, well. this is my third time here. Now, Correct. Um, because uh, it's it's just you know um, amazing feeling that uh, my producers, my past producers, are also here supporting the show. Yes. So it's just like a parang reunion. Reunion. <laughs> right? Reunion ng lahat. I'm just so thrilled. The nice thing is you look the same. Oh, thank you. <laughs> still beautiful, still young. Thank you. So, um, what are you doing lately? I know COVID has shut down a lot of uh, entertainers. In fact, we had Marcelito, we have Martin, we had iconic 
with Sharon and Regina, yes. all of them are just happy to be performing. How do you feel about that? Um, I did some work in the Philippines. Um, mm -hmm. I did uh, a tennis area. Okay. And we were in a bubble for three months. So um, it was a tight schedule, but at least we know already when to end. So it's three months, that's it. And so after that, um, we planned. I planned to do a, a, a tour, a U.S. tour, okay. since um, you know in the Philippines it's not just strict, but entire to do like mass gatherings. Okay. Um, so I'm just. I this is on my ninth state already. Wow. So pang nine ko na ito. Um, Actually, I had my main shows with Mr. Jim Brickman. Oh my goodness, one of our San favorites. Jose. Yes, yeah. diba? <laughs> Sa San Jose, we did yes. one. It was a successful one. And then another one in Redwood City in the Bear Area. Yes. Um, those two, we did uh, a show together. And then after that, I did my own shows, solo shows. Do you have a website that they can, they can check out your um, schedule? They can or? check out my social media, okay. um, in, uh, my Instagram. Hey, uh, Vina, Vina underscore Morales, okay. and then I also have TikTok, Miss Vina Morales, and um, YouTube channel, and also Facebook I have. So. so you can find her all over social media. So for those of you who are watching here in Chicago, please tell your friends, family, and all your kababayans in the different states that Vina Morales is coming. And by the way, we're looking forward to your show. Thank you. What uh, are we going to expect tonight? Um, tonight, uh, definitely I will be singing my own songs. Um, uh, the my Telesaria songs. I will be working with Brian uh, and uh, Joel. that a lot of people oh, are yes. big fans of Teles Area. Marry Me, Marry, uh, Marry, Me, Marry You. Okay. Um, that's um, under um, Capanilla. Okay. TFC. You can check that out. And, and I, I who's with you? Um, I was with Janine, um, Paolo, uh, Cherry Pie, Sunshine. Um, we actually, yeah, a lot of yeah. a lot of stars from um, ABS CBN. How some people are asking. Single. <laughs> and ready to mingle. <laughs> Sorry. You about. have it. There you have it. So for those of you, um, no, don't hit her up on Facebook about those things, okay? She's still a proper Filipino. So, so wait for her green card to come. No, wait for my green card. But anyway, I'm Maria Gurley Pascual, Thank thanking you. Vina Morales. And uh, we look forward to her show this evening. Vina, it's, Thank you. it's, a, pleasure. it's a pleasure. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you. God bless. God bless. Um, Thank you. We'll break a leg. Thank you. God bless everybody. Thank you for watching this segment. Back to the studio. Good afternoon, this is Bridget Carino Quetta bringing you this week's local news from our community. 
Illinois Environmental Protection Agency Director John J. Kim announced the next funding round for Illinois' electric vehicle rebate program will be open Tuesday, November 1, 2022, through Tuesday, January 31, 2023. The current EV rebate funding cycle, which opened on July 1, 2022, will close Friday, September 30, 2022. Individuals that have purchased an all-electric vehicle since July 1, 2022 can still access and complete an application for a rebate under e Illinois' EV rebate program. Applications for the first funding round must be postmarked on or before September 30, 2022. EV purchasers must apply for a rebate within 90 days of the vehicle purchase date. Here in Illinois, we are leading the electric vehicle revolution, said Governor J.B. Pritzker. And thanks to our EV rebate program, we are making electric vehicle adoption accessible and cost-effective, putting us on the path to getting 1 million EVs on the road by 2030. I strongly encourage all eligible residents to apply for the Illinois EPA's next round of funding. This is how we build a more sustainable state, nation, and world together. Funding from President Biden's bipartisan infrastructure law will allow Illinois to begin plugging, capping, and reclaiming up to 20% of the orphaned oil and gas wells in rural communities around the state, Governor J.B. Pritzker and the Illinois Department of Natural Resources announced today. The U.S. Department of Interior has awarded an initial $560 million to 24 states to begin plugging and remediating more than 10,000 high-priority well sites across the country. Illinois will receive $25 million to support its remediation efforts. Orphaned oil and gas wells are environmental and safety hazards that threaten the well-being of our rural communities, said Governor J.B. Pritzker. We appreciate that the Biden administration approved our efforts to award Illinois significant funding to cap and reclaim these wells, safeguarding Illinois families, generating good-paying union jobs, and protecting our environment from disastrous methane leaks in the process. These are the kinds of investments that create a healthier, more sustainable state and union. Kindergarteners at Lloyd Elementary School may soon be riding bikes in their PE classes. All Kids Bike is a national program on a mission to teach every child in America how to ride a bike. They are currently working to bring All Kids Bike Kindergarten PE program to Lloyd Elementary School. The program equips schools with everything they need to teach children how to ride, teacher training and certification, a structured eight-lesson curriculum, a fleet of Strider 14X bikes, pedal conversion kits, fully adjustable helmets, and a five-year support plan. Launched in March 2018, there are already 660 schools in 50 states with all kids bike kindergarten PE programs. Assistant Principal Michelle Quinton, who applied for the program, said, Our school is a hard-working neighborhood in Chicago. We are in need, in a high-need area of the city, and many of our families work more than one job. Our students are in need of support with those activities that our parents do not have the time to do. Being able to learn to ride a bicycle at school would be a great skill that they would be able to use to promote health, fitness, and good mental and physical health. With the bikes and helmets provided, our students would be able to be successful at learning an important life skill. The kindergarten PE program is designed for children of all abilities and hopes to instill healthy habits at a young age. One of the best ways to get kids active is to get them excited about bicycles, says All Kids Bike board member Ryan McFarland. It's a skill that is going to serve them in their life. A village tradition since 1942, the annual Maywood Baton Day Memorial Service, originally scheduled for September 11, 2022, has been postponed until September 10, 2023, due to many circumstances not under, under our control and out of an abundance of caution for the health of presenters and attendees. The Maywood Baton Day organization has decided to take this action. President McMahon 
suggests that those who wish to honor the memory of the men from Maywood and surrounding suburbs who fell on the battlefields of Bataan in the Philippines, as well as those who suffered and died during the infamous death march or subsequent captivity, should visit the MBDO website at www.mbdo.org and browse through hundreds of stories of the men from Maywood as well as thousands of photos from memorial events in the past, both in Maywood and in the Philippines. It is our solemn duty, our promise to these heroes that we remember their service and sacrifice. President McMahon said, they gave all they had. For that, we promise them immortality in our thoughts and prayers. The Maywood Bataan Day organization is dedicated to preserving the memory of Bataan Day and perpetuating the observance of Maywood's Bataan Day on the second Sunday of September. Our modern mission includes supporting veterans of all wars and providing educational resources through our archives and website at www.mbdo.org. The Illinois Department of Insurance issued Company Bulletin 2022-15 today to reaffirm guidance for Illinois licensed health insurance issuers about the coverage of reproductive health care services for state-regulated private health insurance plans. We are putting health insurers on notice that the Illinois law remains unchanged regarding coverage for abortion services and contraceptives, said IDOI Director Dana Popish Severinghouse. We want people in our state to know that their right to make decisions about their reproductive health is protected, and we expect insurers regulated by the department to continue complying with all state and federal laws related to non-discrimination in healthcare services. The Reproductive Health Act requires state-regulated private health insurance plans that offer pregnancy-related benefits to cover abortion. Their requirement includes plans purchased on the ACA, Affordable Care Act, health insurance marketplace, and coverage through an employer that offers a fully insured plan. That's all for today. Thank you for watching our news this week. This is Bridget. See you next time. And that's our show for today. Thank you all for watching Chicago Philippine Reports TV. We hope you will stay safe and enjoying this day with your family and friends. I'm Maria Gurley Pascual. Maraming salamat sa inyong pagsubaybay and we'll see you back here next week.